All right, guys, we're getting ready for the last qualifying session, but before we do that, I thought we'd show you around the pits a little bit, show you what goes on with the A fuel car, the different things that we do to increase performance and just to be ready to get in the big show. So we'll just start at the back and work our way forward, and I'll take you inside to show you where I try to figure out how to tune this temperamental beast. So of course we start in the back, we got our parachutes, that's kind of the same old thing for, for all the cars. Uh, this is our puke tank, we hope we don't have to use this. Um, if something goes bad in the engine, this will catch uh, the three and a half gallons of oil that this engine contains. This here is our warm-up bottle, it actually goes on the back of the engine, it's full of methanol. Use that to start the engine and get it warmed up, and then I'll pull it over the fuel pump with a lever and get it starting on fuel flow and getting it ready to do a burnout and stuff like that. Um, of course, you see all the ballistic blankets we have. This is just to keep protection of those around it. Uh, nitromethane is very volatile as far as when it's compressed, and we don't want to see anyone get hurt, especially on hurt fans or anything like that. As you can see, we have a lot of tools. Uh, to do the job. This here's a tool tray. It sits on top of the roll cage. That's so while the guys are working they can just literally reach right here instead of having to turn around and go to these boxes. Um, other than that, this is our CO2. This is what I use to run all my regulators and uh, timers for fuel and ignition, which I do right here underneath the cowl that I just put on before you got here. So I have timers that I select to do a power grid stuff like that I'll show you that inside right here to my left we have two battery packs we always take two just in case there's something wrong um, they're a lot smaller than they used to be used to be we try to put like six battery 12 volt batteries in a series of course technology is allowing us to have something we can manageably carry around put on a golf cart back of pickup truck whatever that may be while we're talking about charging if you look right here I keep these hanging so when we pull in, I can just simply hook them up. I have two batteries, I have a race pack, a uh, data logger that I have to keep charged up. I also have a 16 volt miniature battery, kind of like an RC car battery. And that works all the timers and electronics and stuff like that. So I have to make sure that those are maintained, fully charged, so that the car can do what it needs to do. We run these cars on 95% nitromethane, which that, what means is when you mix nitromethane with alcohol, it cannot read no higher than 95%. To give you kind of a mixture ratio, if you took a five gallon jug, poured in 35 ounces of methanol, and then filled the rest of the jug up to the five gallon mark with nitromethane, that's gonna get you really close to your 95%. Sometimes a little less, sometimes a little higher, depending on the concentrate of the nitromethane in the barrel. And then over here across from the car, we have a cooler. We're going to put that on. Uh, what we do is we cool the nitromethane. We're allowed 50 degrees, but we'll actually cool it down somewhere around 30 degrees here. By the time we get up to the staging lanes and we've sat for 10 or 15 minutes, it'll be around 50 degrees before we start the car up and begin to burn out. They do random fuel checks. They'll check it right there in the staging lanes before you run. If it's below 50, you can get in trouble, get disqualified. But nine times out of 10, they just check it after the run because you're going to be coming right around the corner and getting your fuel checked. Uh, one more thing, I'll show you the clutch, and then we'll go inside and look around. So right here we have what we call a clutch pack. It's four discs, three floaters. Um, you can tell these discs are getting chewed up pretty good. This is out of the last pass we made. Uh, they get a lot of heat, and when they get overheated, they begin to, begin to come apart. This is a steel floater. You can see the wear on it from the last pass. They turn blue. We actually take these back and cut them down. Uh, we, we have a certain tolerance that we allow. When they get below that thickness, we'll just trash them. Clutch setup is very different between teams. Everybody has their own way of doing things. Probably no two cars are the same. If you go to a team, it's a multi-car team. Chances are their cars aren't, don't even match. They have different clutch setups. 
and things like that because it's just the way the car reacts or because of the person driving it. Each driver does things a little bit different, so you have to tune for that. And we'll look at some tuning software here in the, in the trailer. This is where I spend a lot of my time. We come back from a run, I take the SD card, put it in the reader, hook it to the race pack, read it, bring it in, and download it. And I spend a lot of time running numbers. I have several log books here, just going over the information that the race car has given me, I'm trying to figure out where the clutch locks up, what the temperature of the each cylinder is. If I'm burning spark plugs, I always have my spark plugs brought in to me so I can look at them at the end of the run. If they're burn up, I know we need to do some adjusting. We want to look nice and even and then that kind of helps me tell more fuel less fuel but i look a lot on this race pack data to know drive shaft speed engine temperatures engine rpm when the clutch locks up and just very fine tuning on these cars there's not a big window of tuning um, it is naturally aspirated but there's just a fine tuning line of going really fast or just falling on your face so that's what we do in here of course i've got my practice tree to always try to stay on top of the tree and then my changing station over there behind my spare tires because they don't give me a changing room what's up with that anyway you got any questions stuff we can teach you more about a fuel uh, I know some of you guys reached out and said hey do more stuff on the a fuel car we want to learn just message me say hey I'd like to know about this or that and I'll be glad to try to get you information and help you guys learn as I do this journey and thank you for coming along see ya